Bags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and it's time for my review of album number six from Owl City, Cinematic. Owl City is one of the many aliases of Adam Young, a vocalist, multi-instrumentalist, and record producer from Minnesota. Out of the 40 plus names that Young has gone under, including but not limited to Port Blue, Sky Sailing, Windsor Airlift, uh, Owl City is the one that happened to hit it big in the pop market. Owl City is pretty much a household name, thanks to 2009's Billboard chart topper Fireflies, though a lot of people would recognize Good Time with Carly Rae Jepsen as well. For me personally, Fireflies was the song that made me find out about Owl City and furthermore go check out more of Young's music. His major label debut and sophomore album as Owl City, Ocean Eyes, was actually the album that turned me on to electronic music to begin with. More often than not, it's hailed by fans as his best work and I'd have to agree. Ocean Eyes is undoubtedly one of my favorite albums ever. It's very charming, very imaginative, very punny, uh, very dreamy. The production was super clean all the way around. The lyrics and the melodies were very, very memorable. I think it's a fantastic album. I don't care if people say it sounds too much like Give Up by the Postal Service. I also thought the follow-up to Ocean Eyes, All Things Bright and Beautiful, was pretty solid. But in my opinion, Owl City kind of took a nosedive in quality after that. I mean, I enjoyed my fair share of rotations through the Midsummer Station, though looking back on it, I really don't think it's nearly as good as Owl City's first three albums. And Mobile Orchestra was just a complete commercial mess. I blame Universal Republic. In fact, since my review of that album, I don't think I've desired to listen through it even once. While I still held a lot of love and respect for Adam Young, I had pretty much given up on Owl City at that point. Point. So when Adam announced last year that he was releasing another Owl City album, I was less excited and more just thinking, good riddance. From the preview, Cinematic didn't really sound like it was going to be any better than Mobile Orchestra, and All My Friends definitely wasn't doing it any favors. However, the release of Didrik's Ready to Fly, of course featuring Adam Young uh, earlier this year, actually did kind of reignite my hype for Owl City, and I was really excited to hear what this album would bring in its full glory. And I I've gotta say, this album is actually pretty good. I mean, it's definitely no Ocean Eyes, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly better than his last two albums. And just in terms of personal enjoyment, I'd probably even put it on par with Maybe I'm Dreaming. While Cinematic does have its issues, which I will get to, I do certainly think the positive outweighs the negative in this case. There are a lot of things to love about this album, from its sonic direction, to its conceptual theme, to its lyrics, to its diversity. Sonically, Cinematic is the most Owl City. Owl City has sounded since All Things Bright and Beautiful, and this could be attributed to the fact that Owl City is now releasing independently and Adam probably has more freedom with what he can do with his music. While I would say there are elements of every single Owl City album up to this point found on Cinematic, uh, I think it's probably most sonically similar to All Things. Being that it's generally pop music that relies pretty heavily on having very memorable synth licks, also very similar to that album in the way of just having a lot of strings peppered over the track list, though Cinematic is also pretty distinctive on its own. I mean, All Things Bright and Beautiful didn't have songs that were going for more of a country vibe or like a singer-songwriter kind of thing. And really the major thing that I feel like separates these two albums is the lyrics. I mean, the lyrics on Cinematic are in an entirely different ballpark. Cinematic is a bit less nonsensical and a bit less dreamy, but the trade-off is that this is the first Owl City album that feels really, really personal. Cinematic actually in encompasses the story of Adam Young's life so far in the way he wants it to be told, from his birth to his childhood to his experiences in the music industry to his recent happenings with his girlfriend Abby Olmsted. I mean, even if you don't like this album for how poppy it is, you do kind of have to commend Adam for going and doing something that he's never really done before on an album. And while it might seem at first glance that Cinematic is just as messy as Mobile Orchestra given how many different sounds Young is going for on this, it actually all works together surprisingly cohesively, given that all these songs kind of share a commonality in their storytelling. Now, as I said, this album isn't without its flaws. I feel that Cinematic's biggest flaw comes in the way of just having a lot of recycled content. Beside having a few pairs of lyrics that I thought were a little too eerily similar to some older Owl City songs, there are definitely a lot of chord progressions and melodies that begin to feel pretty tiring. Most notably, the melody doo-doo-doo-doo-doo can be found on 
have like numerous tracks on this album. Now, given that this album is supposed to be cinematic, I think Adam could have actually used that to his advantage to have a little melody to work as a theme that kind of repeats uh, throughout the entire album, but I don't think that's the purpose of this melody. It feels a little bit more unintentional. I, I think Adam's just been writing a little bit too much pop music. Beyond that, some of the lyric phrasing comes off as a little bit awkward, specifically on the song Lucid Dream, where the phrasing of, do you believe life is a lucid dream? That's how you study the stars, comes off as just really odd to me. Also, there are generally just some awkward lines in this album. I definitely could have done without the Star Wars references on the title track for one. The last thing that I feel drags this album down is that cinematic makes Adam Young's life out to be not that exciting. In spite of the lyrics on the title track, Adam Young's life doesn't really seem to be all that cinematic. This album highlights a lot of the highs and not really any of the lows. There's nothing really keeping me on the edge of my seat, it's really just all feel-good music, and I'm not necessarily complaining because that's basically how Ocean Eyes was too. When you specifically want an album to be cinematic, you kind of have to have the element. You have to have both the highs and the lows. According to this album, Adam Young's entire life can really be summed up in just a few sentences. He was born, he grew up in a small town, his parents really loved him, he went on a few field trips, he got signed to a record label, and now he's living life to the fullest with a really awesome girlfriend. Yeah, I have a hard time believing that a, that's all a Billboard chart topper has been through in his life. Regardless of all of that, as I said, to me this is a very solid album. It's definitely a bit of a return to form for Owl City, which I really enjoy, and I also think it's a really good indicator of where he's at as an artist right now. Very quickly, I'm gonna try to blow through this track by track. Fiji Water is definitely a favorite of mine, and I think it's a really great way to start the album with uh, the song story surrounding Adam's experience with Universal music, talking about how surreal that first experience was, yet still highlighting his regrets and things that he wishes he could change. The 5th of July is a really, really sweet song surrounding the uh, circumstances of his birth. It's a really sweet tribute to Adam's parents and his family, and it actually samples some of them, which I think is really cool, and he does it numerous times on the album after this moment. All My Friends is a song that I actually enjoy a lot more found in the context of this album than I did as a single, though I absolutely cannot stand the gang vocals on this song. I think it does kind of have its place considering it's a song about having, you know, childhood friends and it kind of captures that kids bop vibe in a very clear way. If the entire album would have been songs like this, I would have absolutely hated it, but I can deal with it for like three minutes. House Ren isn't necessarily a standout for me. I will say I did like some of the instrumentation choices, though I'm, I'm still not really big on that whistle synth that was the, the same one that he used on Verge. Although that synth to me makes more sense in the context of this song because birds do do a little bit of a whistle or a chirp um, and it kind of fits the theme a bit better. Not All Heroes Wear Capes, though it's nothing absolutely astonishing. I think is a really sweet song, you know, dedicated to Adam's dad. Montana is one of the few songs on the album that doesn't actually tell one of Adam's own stories, but actually a relative of his. I actually like the story a lot that's being told in this song, though I will say the lyrics kind of sound like they've been pulled off a brochure to, like, visit Montana. And I have kind of the same thoughts about Madeline Island in New York City. Lucid Dream is probably the most old school sounding Owl City song on the album. Instrumentally, it's pretty much a genuine trance song, which is pretty cool. Lyrically, fittingly, very vivid and very dreamy. I really enjoy some of the imagery that's given on this song, like the black rabbit of death and the fire and diamonds falling from the sky. I think it's really cool. Always is kind of the token Christian song of Cinematic. Uh, we've gotten one of these on practice every single Owl City album, and while I don't prefer it to Meteor Shower, and I don't think anyone else is going to either, I kind of see why this song needed to be here, as Adam Young's faith is a very important part of his life. Cloud Nine is so, so cute and cheesy, but I love it, and I absolutely love the girl changes too. Winners Never Quit was probably the most forgettable song in the album for me. I mean, I kind of enjoy the instrumental, but the lyrics are, are just very forgettable to me. Be Brave is probably one of my favorites. It's one of the more epic I guess, tracks on the album. I really love the progression of this song. It starts out kind of dark and then you kind of get that light in the tunnel kind of feel and then everything just bursts with light and energy with of course the 
lyrics surrounding the events of Adam meeting his current girlfriend. Speaking of Abby, the song Firebird is actually from her perspective, which I think is interesting. It's the story of her and her brother growing up and everything changing, and you know, it's a pretty cool song that I feel like a lot of people will be able to connect to. Cinematic, the title track, I just about love. It's got this kind of movie end credits feel to it, and it wraps up the entire theme of the album really nicely. Also, that synth that comes in right after the first chorus just absolutely rips into me. I basically like all of the alt versions that Adam put in toward the end of the album. I feel like they have a very solid, like, bedroom production sound that I really enjoy. All My Friends is definitely the one that I prefer the most over its original version. It's more toned back, it doesn't have those gang vocals, it actually has a feature from Brianne Duran, which made for a really sweet moment on the album for me. And the alt version of Firebird, I'm pretty sure actually features Abby and her brother singing on it, which I think is really, really cool. I kind of would have liked to even see that on the original version of the song. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this album. I mean, I'm planning on actually ranking all of the Owl City albums in a video at some point later this year, so I'll probably talk about a couple more things later then, uh, but that pretty much covers all of the grounds. I hope it makes sense why I like this album as much as I do, and obviously I do think it has some flaws, but I think they're pretty much outweighed by how good it is. I think, hands down, it's his best album since all things. I can definitely see myself coming back to this album, though I don't know entirely how much replay value it's going to have. For Owl City Cinematic, I am feeling a decent 7 out of 10. If you guys haven't listened to this album yet, as always, I have the Spotify link down in the down in the description below. And if you guys have listened to this album already, which, geez, it's, it's been out for a month already, that's hard to believe, but uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section. And as always, I'm Landon Remixes. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.